Welcome to the Minnesota Nano Center's Wafer Dicing Saw training course. In this video, you will learn how to safely and properly use our Disco Wafer Dicing Saw. Before we delve into the standard operating procedure for this tool, you should first understand the intended applications as well as some of the restrictions for using the tool. The dicing saw is designed to make straight cuts from edge to edge make full or partial depth cuts, dice samples up to one millimeter thick, dice silicon, glass, quartz, sapphire, and other oxides. The dicing saw is not designed to make curved or partial length cuts, dice samples thicker than one millimeter, dice potentially hazardous materials, now that we've gone over some of the basic applications and restrictions for using the saw, let's move on to the standard operating procedure. The first thing you will want to do is to verify which blade is needed to dice your substrate. There are two primary blades used on the system. A silicon dicing blade, which is only designed to dice silicon substrates, and an everything dicing blade which is capable of dicing every allowable substrate material. Due to its versatility, the everything dicing blade is most often used. However, if you are dicing silicon and would like a smaller cut width, which is often referred to as the kerf width, then you should use the silicon dicing blade instead. It should be noted that the everything dicing blade has a kerf width around 180 to 200 microns, whereas the silicon dicing blade has a kerf width around 50 microns. Within the Badger application, you can check which blade is currently installed by clicking on the Maintenance tab and looking at the comment that shows the current blade status. If you would like a different blade installed, please email the appropriate MNC staff members stating which blade you would like to use and when you plan on using the tool. We'll try to accommodate your request as soon as possible, but you should periodically check the status in Badger to verify that the blade has in fact been changed. Once you are ready to use the tool, you can enable it in Badger. After arriving at the tool, double check that the installed blade is the correct blade. If you are unable to determine this by simply looking at the blade, then you can check the blade storage containers on top of the tool. If the appropriate container is empty, then you can be reasonably sure that this is the blade currently installed on the system. Rotate the spindle while looking at the exposed portion of the blade to ensure that the blade is not chipped or cracked. If the blade is damaged, you should not use the dicing saw. If this happens, please report a problem in Badger so the appropriate staff members can replace the blade. Before turning on the tool, it's important to know what to do in case of an emergency. If an emergency occurs during the operation of the dicing saw, such as visible smoke, sparks, fire, or any other sign of danger or equipment failure like grinding noises, etc., please press the red Emergency Manual Off button. If the Emo button is pressed, and you wish to unlatch it, you can rotate the button clockwise and this should cause the button to pop back up. When you are ready to start up the machine, make sure your hands are clear of the cutting area and then turn the power key switch clockwise all the way and then release the key switch. The system should start up and then initialize. During initialization, the chuck, spindle, and microscope will move. Be careful and make sure that nothing enters the cutting area during this time, as this could result in serious injury and may also damage the equipment. During initialization, you may notice the monitor displaying a message that says, Working. If the initialization completes successfully, the main menu should appear with no visible warnings or alarms present. If you do notice an alarm, which will flash near the bottom of the screen, 
shut down the machine in Badger, and be sure to include a description of the alarm shown. Turn on the spindle by pressing the spindle button on the control panel. You may notice the spindle button LED begin to blink as the spindle ramps up. You may also notice an indication that the spindle is turning on near the bottom of the monitor. Once the spindle is fully ramped up, the monitor will say, Spindle on. The spindle button LED will also turn solid red. Next, you'll want to select the main menu option number 2, Cut Program Entry, which is where the dicing program recipes are stored. Press the number 2 on the keypad to see the current list of programs. Select the program you want to edit by typing in the program number, followed by pressing the Enter button. Most users will use program number 1. There are a number of parameters listed within each dicing program. Let's begin at the top, where we see a parameter for measurement units. This should always be set to mm for millimeters. Next, we have the name or ID of the program. This can be changed by pressing the Enter button, which will cause a keyboard screen to appear. Please note that you should not change the name of the Any User program. However, since that's the program we're using here, I will show you how to change the program ID, which can be applied to any other program. Use the arrow cursor buttons located below the number keypad to select the character you would like to add to the ID string, and then press Enter. Once you have entered all the characters for your ID, you can move the cursor to select the End option and then press Enter to save the changes. If you want to discard any changes made, which is what we are going to do here, simply press the Escape button on the keypad to close the keyboard screen and return to the cut program. Next, there are several work size parameters, including W and D, which are best explained by looking at the following diagram. W is the maximum width of the substrate which we can also describe as the length of the cut. Since we want to ensure that we have plenty of clearance for the dicing blade, it is best to make W at least 10 millimeters greater than the actual maximum width of your substrate. For example, if you are dicing a 100 millimeter wafer, you should set this parameter to at least 110 millimeters, if not larger. If your wafer isn't well centered on the x-axis of the dicing tape, you should make this value even larger. If W is set too small, the blade will break, so it is best to err on the side of caution. The parameter D is the depth or distance spanning the array of cuts. I recommend setting this parameter to at least 110 millimeters in all cases. This ensures that the system detects plenty of room to complete all your cuts, even if your wafer is not well centered on the y-axis of the dicing tape. The parameter H has two functions, but the primary function is setting the blade height, that is, the distance between the blade and the chuck, after a cut has been completed, so it can safely travel over and across the substrate. The secondary function of this parameter will be discussed later in this training video. The C adjustment and Y offset parameters are not used, and so they should already be set to zero. The next parameter that you may want to change is the theta rotation index. This parameter controls how many degrees of rotation occur when using the rotate function on the control panel. Most users want to have square or rectangular die, and so it is most often set to 90 degrees. However, if you want to cut die in the shape of a rhombus, for example, you can change this parameter as needed. The spindle rotation parameter controls the speed of the spindle, measured in RPMs or revolutions per minute. Most users leave this set to 25,000. However, there may be cases where changing this value is warranted, particularly if you are dicing harder substrates and are noticing significant blade wear or premature blade failure. 
The bottom half of the program window contains a set of step numbers, with each step number displayed above the blade height parameter. The active or currently selected step number will have brackets around it, as shown here with step 1. Most users only program one step, but you can program up to 30 steps, with each step having its own defined set of parameters, including blade height, depth steps, index, and cut speed. The first step parameter, blade height, is the distance between the blade and the chuck during a cut. Most users prefer to dice all the way through their substrates and partially into the dicing tape that their substrates are mounted on. Typically, one of two values are used, depending on which dicing tape is used. If you are using the blue tape, which is less tacky, and better suited for creating die that are larger than 1 cm by 1 cm, you should set this value to 0.06 mm, or 60 microns. If you are using the white tape, which has a UV releasable adhesive, better suited for creating die that are 1 cm by 1 cm or smaller, you should set this value to 0.09 mm, or 90 microns. The next parameter, depth steps, is best explained by looking at the following diagram. As mentioned earlier, the work size h parameter has two functions. We already discussed its primary function, which is to set the blade height both before and after a cut is made in order to provide clearance over your sample as the blade travels to its next dicing location. The secondary function for h is used whenever a user has programmed a particular depth step value. In this case, H is also used to set the initial blade height for a series of cuts that are performed at increasing depths before moving to the next cut location where the process is repeated once again. As an example, if your depth steps parameter is set to 1.4 millimeters, and your work size H parameter is set to 2 millimeters, then each cut line will be cut multiple times at increasing depths as follows. First, a cut is performed at a height of 2 millimeters, which has not yet made contact with the substrate. Next, the blade is lowered by the depth step value of 1.4 millimeters, resulting in a partial depth cut made at a blade height of 0.6 millimeters, which is 2 millimeters minus the 1.4 millimeter depth step. The blade continues to be lowered by the depth step value of 1.4 millimeters, followed by making another cut until the blade reaches the programmed blade height, which in this case is set to 0.06 millimeters, or 60 microns resulting in a full depth cut. Most users do not use depth steps. If you are not going to use this feature, you can disable it by leaving this parameter set to zero as shown in this program. The next parameter we want to program is the y-axis index, which we can see in the following diagram. This index parameter is simply the distance between cut lines. If you are cutting your substrate into an array of die, this parameter will effectively determine one dimension of your die. If you wish to later dice the substrate in another orientation, for example by rotating the substrate by 90 degrees, you can change this index parameter once again if needed to determine the second dimension of your die. If you are not sure what your index should be, you can just estimate this value or set it to 10 millimeters and adjust it later as needed. The cut speed is the horizontal or x-axis speed that the substrate will travel at during dicing. You should read the appendix at the end of the SOP to select a proper cut speed for your particular dicing application. Silicon is most often diced at a cut speed of 4 or 5 millimeters per second. The final parameter you will need to program is the total lines parameter, 
which is the total number of cut lines you wish to make once you run your cut program. It is highly recommended that you perform a test cut before executing an entire array of cuts across your substrate. If you do plan to make a test cut, then you should set this parameter to 1 for now, as you can always change it later, after a test cut has been performed. When you are finished programming your cut program, press the Escape button on the keypad to exit out of the cut program, and then press the Escape button one more time to exit the cut entry screen. This should take you back to the main menu. When you are ready to load your sample, move the spindle and microscope all the way back by simultaneously pressing and holding the Y axis up arrow and high speed buttons. Once the spindle and microscope are all the way back, you may hear an alarm indicating that you've reached the Y axis limit. Press the escape button to silence this alarm. Move the control panel to the right by grabbing both sides of the metal housing and pushing it to the right using your left hand. Move the chuck all the way to the right by simultaneously pressing and holding the x-axis right arrow and high speed buttons. Once the chuck is all the way to the right, you may hear an alarm indicating that you've reached the x-axis limit. Press the escape button to silence this alarm. Make sure that the chuck vacuum is turned off. The red light on the vac button should not be lit. If the red light is lit, press the vac button once to turn the vacuum off. Once your sample is mounted on dicing tape, you can load it onto the chuck. Make sure the metal mounting frame is in the correct position, seated around the outer lip of the chuck. Now you can perform a coarse theta alignment by simply grabbing and rotating the chuck until your sample or the feature you wish to cut along is roughly parallel with the x-axis or the front edge of the tool. Once you are satisfied with your coarse theta alignment, you can push the control panel back to the left until it clicks into place. Press the vac button once to turn on the chuck vacuum. The red light on the vac button should turn on. If you see an alarm which says chuck vacuum low, press the escape button to silence the alarm. Verify that the chuck vacuum is sufficient by looking at the vacuum gauge. The white needle should be pointing somewhere in the blue colored region of the gauge. Access the blade setup screen by pressing the setup on button. Once the setup screen appears, you need to verify that several parameters are correct. These parameters are important for the system to know whether or not a blade change is needed by tracking the current blade exposure, which is the amount of blade diameter that is available for cutting. Verify that the first four parameters match the values listed in the SOP. Before proceeding any further, you should verify the location of the Z emergency button. Since the blade setup involves the blade slowly approaching and eventually making contact with the chuck, the ZEM button may need to be pressed if you notice any sparks or damage occurring as the blade makes contact with the chuck. The ZEM button, if pressed, will cause the blade spindle assembly to lift up and away from the chuck. When you are ready to initiate the blade setup, ensure that your hands are free and clear of the cutting area and then press the setup on button one more time. You may notice the spindle, microscope, and chuck moving during the setup initialization. If the blade setup has completed successfully, the system will automatically exit out of the blade setup screen, returning back to the main menu.
you may occasionally experience an alarm which says setup compare which can happen due to the fact that the chuck isn't perfectly flat if this happens you can press the escape button to silence the alarm if one or both of the blade correct quantity parameters is a negative value then there is a way for you to circumvent this error first press the shift button on the keypad to toggle the blade change parameter from no to yes then press the enter button next move the cursor down to the current blade exposure parameter and note the value listed retype in this value and then press enter now you can retry the blade setup by pressing the setup on button one more time if this does not resolve the issue then please power down the machine and report a problem in Badger. From the main menu, press the display button to toggle the monitor input to the microscope camera. You may not be able to see any features on your sample yet, especially if the microscope is out of focus, or if your sample is not positioned under the microscope. Use the Y axis up or down arrow buttons or the X axis left or right arrow buttons to position the microscope over a feature of interest. If you have no features on your sample, you can use the edge of your sample or a wafer flat instead. Once you have found a feature that you can use for a coarse focus adjustment, unlock the coarse focus adjustment knob by turning the locking lever counterclockwise at least a quarter of a turn. Once unlocked, the coarse focus knob will tend to drift over time, and so you will need to adjust it with one hand while using your other hand to turn the locking lever clockwise until it is lightly snug. Please do not over tighten these levers. Use the fine focus knob if needed to make any other focal adjustments using the same procedure as you did with the coarse focus. The fine focus knob requires more force to adjust, so keep this in mind if you encounter any resistance even after the locking lever has been loosened. Be sure to relock this lever once you are satisfied with your focal adjustments. If needed, you can also adjust the microscope lamp brightness using the direct lighting knob, which is located just below the monitor. The next step is to determine if any further theta adjustments are needed for your sample. If you have a feature or sample edge to align to, you can verify the degree of misalignment by moving the X axis and seeing if your alignment feature appears to drift up or down on the monitor. Let's examine the following diagram to see an example of how this adjustment can be accomplished. In this example, we can see that the alignment feature is offset in the counterclockwise direction. If the user were to move the chuck by pressing the x-axis left arrow button, they would notice that the alignment feature seems to drift upward. This implies that some degree of clockwise rotation is needed to correct the theta alignment. If theta has been adjusted properly, moving the chuck to the left or right should result in little, if any, vertical movement of the alignment feature. If a high precision is needed for theta adjustments, use the x-axis high speed button while pressing the left or right arrow buttons, as this will amplify the appearance of any misalignment. Once you are satisfied with your theta alignment, move the y-axis to a region where you can perform a test cut. Remove any possible stepper motor backlash by pressing the Y axis down arrow, followed by pressing the up arrow. Then press the theta clockwise rotation button, followed by pressing the counterclockwise rotation button. Turn on the cut water by pressing the cut water button. Observe the cut water stream as it hits the blade to verify whether or not the water nozzle needs to be adjusted. In this diagram, we can see which conditions we are trying to meet. First, 
we want to ensure that the water stream hits the exposed portion of the blade as much as possible. Second, we want to ensure that the water stream splits into two streams after hitting the blade, represented here by the two dark blue lines. The water nozzle can be adjusted by rotating, pushing, or pulling the nozzle accordingly. Once you have verified the water jet alignment, turn off the cut water by pressing the cut water button. Next, turn off the spindle by pressing the spindle button. Once the spindle has fully ramped down, you should hear a loud click, indicating that the safety cover solenoid has unlocked. Close the left safety cover by lifting up the black handle, pulling toward you, and then pushing the black handle down firmly. While holding the safety cover closed, turn on the spindle again by pressing the spindle button. You should hear a loud click again, indicating that the safety solenoid has engaged. Verify that the safety cover is secured by pulling up on the black handle. Press the display button to toggle the monitor back to the main menu. Press the number 2 on the keypad to select the cut entry screen. Enter the cut program number that you wish to run. Verify that every parameter is correct before proceeding. When you are ready to start your dicing program, place the styrofoam water shield in between the control panel and the left safety cover, as this will help to keep water from splashing outside the cutting area. Press the full button to prepare the system for running your cut program. This may cause the chuck to move slightly. Press the Start button to initiate your cut program. This should cause the monitor to display the Cut Status Management screen. Once the cut has been completed, the Cut Status Management screen should display Job End at the bottom of the screen, and the sample chuck should return to its original position under the microscope. When the dicing program has completed, you should disable the fully automatic operation by pressing the full button. Next, turn off the cut water by pressing the cut water button. Press the display button if needed to toggle the monitor input to the microscope so you can see your cut. If the center hairline is not in the center of your cut, or if you wish to change where each cut appears on the monitor, you can adjust this by unlocking the microscope alignment knob and rotating it as needed. Once you are satisfied with your blade to microscope alignment, be sure to re-engage the locking lever. If you would like to move the entire set of hairlines up or down, first press the F1 button to disable it. Then hold the Shift button on the keypad while pressing the cursor up or down buttons. If you would like to change the distance spanned by these hairlines, press the F1 button to enable it. Then hold the shift button on the keypad while pressing the cursor up or down buttons. If you are interested in measuring the length of or distance between features, you can press the measure button. This should cause a micrometer to appear on the monitor. Use the Y-axis or X-axis arrow buttons to move the stage and perform your measurement. When you are finished measuring, you can press the Measure button to disable it. Press the display button if you'd like to adjust any parameters, such as the total lines parameter, for example, 
if you are going to be performing an array of cuts, or the index parameter if any further adjustments are needed. If you would like to verify that your index or total lines parameters are correct, you can press the Y axis index button. Then you can use the Y axis up or down arrow buttons to advance the microscope by the value indicated in your index parameter. You can either tap the Y axis up or down arrows if that helps you, or you can simply hold down an arrow button and the microscope will index accordingly. Be sure to index back to where you'd like to begin your array of cuts, which should be the cut location that is closest to the front of the machine. When you are finished indexing, press the Y axis index button to disable it. Remove the backlash once again by tapping the Y axis down arrow, followed by tapping the Y axis up arrow. You can now perform your array of cuts using the same procedure as you did with your test cut. If you would like to dice your sample in another orientation, you can rotate it by the theta rotation index value by pressing the rotation button followed by pressing the clockwise rotation button. When you are finished rotating your substrate, press the rotate button once again to disable it. Remove the backlash once again by tapping the clockwise rotation button, followed by tapping the counterclockwise rotation button. When you are finished dicing your sample, you can unload it, following the same set of instructions used during sample loading. Turn off the chuck vacuum by pressing the vacuum button. The red light on the vacuum button should turn off. You should also see the vacuum gauge needle move to the red colored region of the gauge. Wait until the needle approaches the black mark or stops moving, indicating that the chuck is no longer holding a vacuum. Before removing your sample from the chuck, you should first dry it off with nitrogen so you don't spill water on the floor. Remove your sample from the chuck by holding the chuck down with one hand and using the other hand to pry the metal mounting ring up and away from the chuck magnets. Once your sample has been removed, you can move the control panel back to its home position. Turn off the spindle by pressing the spindle button. Once you hear the safety solenoid click, you should be able to open the left safety cover to allow the cutting area to dry. Press the Escape button twice to return to the main menu. Turn off the dicing saw by rotating the key switch counterclockwise. Disable the tool in Badger. Remove your sample from the metal mounting ring and discard any mounting tape attached to the ring. This concludes the initial training course for the Disco Wafer Dicing Saw. When you are ready for an in-person follow-up training session, where you can dice your own sample if desired, please read the SOP and then email the training instructor to schedule a time for the follow-up.